Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel. Guess what we're going to do today? And am I the asshole? That these have just been great. And if you did not think the world is full of narcissists, you ought to go on Reddit and read all of these because whoo. And so let's talk about this one today. It's a good one. If you're new to this channel, which is on narcissism, which believe it or not, this video will be on, please do join us, subscribe, join this fantastic community. But let's talk about this one. It's a very interesting one. And as somebody who back in high school worked in these kinds of jobs, I found, I actually found this one quite compelling. So this person is saying, I am a high school, it's a high school student, high school age person with a weekend job at a coffee shop. My coworkers who, we, who work weekends are the owner's son. He goes to my school. He's a shift manager, but it's not a real formal thing. And he's a friendly guy. And then another person who's a college student who sometimes works weekends too. So sometimes customers will come in and just be angry about such little stuff, like literally blow up about nothing. I don't know if they're in a bad mood already and looking for someone to take it out on or what, but it's a lot. Like how sad you, so how sad you have to be to be a grown ass man taking your anger out on high school and college kids. That paragraph actually struck me because it's it's something that I think we're all seeing. You remember how we talk about, you know, there's just sort of the everyday narcissism we run into in the world. I don't know if the person who behaves like this is necessarily narcissistic, but there's something missing in them, right? There has to be a lack of empathy. There's a lot of entitlement. There's a fair amount of grandiosity. There's a lot of arrogance and dysregulation. I mean, that too sounds like narcissism, but we're seeing it everywhere. I'm sure a lot of you, I mean, you can't go anywhere, grocery store, coffee shop, you name it. So that incivility in the world, that, that struck me about this one. Okay, so now him and the owner's son started joking about having a little fun with some of these difficult customers and hopefully getting them off of our backs, which anyone who's ever worked in the customer service industry is like, how can we punish these people who are so difficult and mean? So one day I was at work and some guy was having a temper tantrum about how we don't make the coffee hot enough, which of course, you know, if that dude spilled the coffee on him, then he'd be screaming, you make the coffee too hot. But the guy was screaming that the coffee wasn't hot enough which the guy, the, the letter writer, couldn't do a thing about because I gave it to him right out of the machine. So the owner's son came in and was like, sir, is there a problem here? And the guy, the customer who wanted the hot coffee, started ranting at him too. So he was just like, he turns to the guy, to the guy who wrote the letter and uh, to the, you know, the, again, the person who wrote this, am I the asshole? And said, this is unacceptable. You're fired. Okay, so the owner's son said, you're fired. The guy who wrote the letter said, I started acting really sad, like, no, no, please don't fire me. My family needs the money. I need this job, please. And the owner's son played up being a hard ass, telling me to take off my apron and leave. The angry guy started to backtrack, like, it isn't that big of a problem, okay? You don't need to fire her over it. I didn't mean it. And the owner's son said, no, we pride ourselves on the best customer service. Of course, after all that drama, I still had my job. We were just acting. And we've done it a couple of times. Whenever a customer will lose their temper at, either, at anyone who works there, the owner's son will storm in and fire us. And almost every time, the person who had come in angry will apologize and say they didn't mean it. It's kind of satisfying making people realize their actions may actually have consequences. Anyway... I was telling my friends from school about this and a few of them thought it was a mean prank because there's no end to enablers, right? That it was a mean prank to let someone go away thinking that they'd gotten someone who desperately needs the money fired. Am I the asshole for this joke? No, I only wish I had thought of this when I was in high school and college working at a fast food restaurant and then waiting tables. Really wish I had thought of it. It's, it's actually really brilliantly thought out because it does something interesting, right? And this right here is the mind F that is narcissism. If those customers who came in screaming about the coffee and everything had been straight up psychopaths, they wouldn't care that the person got fired. This is where narcissism really messes with us, right? Because these people who, I mean, only a deeply insecure person is going to come into a coffee shop and yell at high school and college age employees who are working for minimum wage. 
only the most insecure, bullying, probably narcissistic people are going to do that, right? Well, they're different than the psychopaths. So when they see that their behavior has consequences, a strange kind of empathy comes up. And it's not real empathy. It's almost like, ooh, I did a bad thing. And, I, that's, and they feel shame. And that shame then is like, whoa, 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 they don't need to get fired. It, they, they catch themselves. You will see this, for example, with narcissistic people who might be, like, let's say you have a manager who's narcissistic and they yell at the people who report to them, right? Like the rank and file workers. And they're a total jerk to them. But when they have to deal with the boss above them, they're just like a whimpering sycophant, like, oh, I'll do anything you want. So you can see that transfer that they will they'll sort of shape shift and be a bit of a chameleon depending on how much power they feel they have in a situation. And that dysregulation of the coffee's not hot enough or that this isn't that enough, that they can't keep that contained and not go off on someone who probably can't do that much on, about it. Such a signature move of people with narcissistic personalities. I think this was a brilliant move because it was actually a really almost a living, living experiment because frankly, if they did this to someone and they didn't care, they're like, all right, get them fired. I just want some hotter coffee. That would be to me like, ooh, that's a little bit, that's a little bit darker. But the narcissistic folks, they do not like the idea that not only would they face consequences, they don't like the idea that any of their behavior has consequences. So they really are sort of the preening, pretentious, arrogant fool until somebody says, oh, there's going to be real consequences for this. So for example, if there was a workplace event or even a social event and the narcissist did something and then many people are penalized for it, a narcissistic person would be really, really uncomfortable with that. But I think this is actually, it, it, it might even need to be part of customer service training because it's a great way. Otherwise, we don't have consequences for these narcissistic folks, do we, right? I, I regularly, regularly go into businesses. In fact, I go, I, I try not to as much as I can because I just hate how people treat people who work in businesses, um, who are frontline workers of any kind. It's just awful to watch. But I regularly see them being abused by dysregulated people. And it is, and, and they, they really, these folks are completely powerless. And in the era we live in, with people who have gotten so dysregulated and if they have any form of weapon on them could become quite dangerous, a lot of times these frontline workers actually have to be very, very careful. But the idea that a manager could roll up and say to someone, you've been fired, I wouldn't be surprised if that wouldn't work 60 to 70% of the time. Now, I don't know what they do if they have repeat customers, if any of those customers came back and then saw the fired person still working there. But if we know one thing about narcissistic shame, I will bet you that that person who threw that hot coffee tantrum won't show up again because narcissistic behavior is very shaped by shame. And remember, shame has to be a true public judgment. That's why shame often doesn't work one-on-one. -on -one. You as an individual won't be able to shame the narcissist. But if they have a sense that there's some sort of public reckoning over their behavior or other people are aware of it, they will slink away like a little slime monster back into the swamp kind of thing. Like they, they'll just slide away. They do not like that idea of it being a public judgment and may not literally show up back to that place again. So that's something to keep in mind. So maybe without thinking about it, this person who's definitely not the asshole, in fact, I'd almost say is a little bit of a genius when it comes to managing narcissistic customers. I think more than a few companies might want to build this into their customer service manuals and really, really sort of see what a narcissist with their sort of tail between their legs, whose bullying actually results in real consequences, how they respond. So I like that one. Love to know your thoughts on that one. Did you think they were an asshole? I definitely didn't. Thanks again.